Hello, this is Christy from Graphicious. In today's video, I'm going to show you a method to track an object in Camtasia 2021. Now, you'll say, yes, Camtasia doesn't have tracking, motion tracking. So yes, it's true, it doesn't. And I don't know if they're going to introduce that anytime soon. But I want to show you how you can actually still do it to maybe acceptable level, depending on the movement you want to track. And it's is a manual process, so I'm warning you, it is a manual process, but maybe if you're uh, stuck or you are in a bind or you need, um, you know, you need to do a tracking on an object or follow something, you know, you can still do it using plain old animations in Camtasia. So I'm just going to walk you through a few things that you can use to make this job easier. And then I'm going to show you how to track movement across a video clip with another object. So. The idea is that we are going to create an annotation that we're going to use to move around the screen, tracking an object. And I'm going to show you a few tips to make that easier and to improve the tracking, um, as it were, tracking um, to achieve this effect. So I'm in Camtasia 2021 here, and I have a, a video clip of some drifting racing cars just coming across the screen. And we'll notice this orange car is always on the screen. So I want to track this image, this car in this video, I want to track it and I want to have a text kind of follow this car around. So I'm going to go to the start of my uh, video clip here and I'm going to place an annotation on the screen. So notice that the car is not yet on the screen. So obviously I have to go to the point where the car comes in, which is about here. So now I want my object to start tracking this car. And yes, I did say we are tracking it manually, but I'm going to show you some things to make this tracking more realistic. Because if you think about it, even in Adobe Premiere or other video editing programs that do have tracking, what happens is really the tracking is the same just like here. The object is moved frame by frame to a new location and all that the tracking does is really just follow something and, and notices the shift in pixels to make sure that it's moving that object to the new coordinates. So ultimately, even these pro more professional video editors do end up generating keyframes for every single frame. So what we will be doing here, we will be approximating um, the movement of the object from frame to frame, but maybe depending on your movement, we can get away with not actually doing it frame by frame because Camtasia can make all the frames in between. So the first thing to do is we need to change the easing, the default easing for the animation. The reason for that is by default in Camtasia, when you move one object from one point to another, Camtasia creates what is called easing and it doesn't create linear easing it creates a exponential in and out i believe what this means is if i move an object from one point to another let me just give you an example let's go to annotations and i'm going to add this annotation here and if i add an animation to it let's go to animation custom we're not tracking the object right now i'm just going to demonstrate what happens with the annotation so I'm going to turn off my video track and I'm going to move this object from there to there. So watch what happens during the animation. You notice the object speeds up and then slows down at the end. In the middle of the animation, the speed is maximum and at the start and at the end, the animation speeds up and slows down. This is called easing to make the movement a little more realistic. Well, we don't want this because we don't want it to accelerate and decelerate between keyframes. So if you right click on this, you can say enable easing and put it to linear. Now, because we don't want to do this for every single segment of animation we will be creating, we want to change the default behavior. So we want to go first to edit, go to preferences, and we want to change this option here, program options, default easing type. This is the default easing to auto, which I believe is similar to exponential in and out. And we will set it to linear. So now 
any new animation we create is not going to have this effect of speeding up and slowing down at the end of the uh, animation and the start um, around the keyframes. So watch this. I'm going to delete this animation here. And then I'm going to add another custom animation. The same thing, just moving the object from point A to point B. But now watch what happens. The animation is going to be linear. So there is no more speeding up and slowing down. So now we're ready to create our tracking. Let me delete the animation again and turn on the video track again. So this is my video track. Obviously, if I play it now, my annotation stays in one place. What I want to do is I want to say, uh, just put a text here, driver one. I don't know. So we want this annotation to move and follow this orange car. Now, even in more professional uh, video editor software, you want to choose a point or a few pixels from the source object that you're trying to follow. You want to focus on those points and tell the software to follow those points around. Like, for example, if you want to blur a car license plate, you're going to frame the license plates in a a mask or, or, or in a selection and then tell that software to track that and that software is going to analyze those pixels and follow them on screen well Camtasia doesn't do this maybe they will add this later so we will be doing that manually we will be following that object manually but because we want it to be as accurate as possible we want to choose a particular point on the object that we're going to follow with our object so that we every time we move that it stays in the same place on the object. So it looks like it's following. So what we want to do is, now that we change the default behavior of the animation, what we want to do is we want to do the extremities first. So I want to create a keyframe at the start of the animation and another one at the very end. When So I'm creating a, a starting point where my object comes into the scene and another point when the object leaves the scene completely. I don't want to create these in between yet. So if you watch my video here, you're going to see that I want to start tracking right here when the car is on the screen here. And I want to stop tracking this car. You notice it's, it's coming in the screen and it's going, going, and then it turns around and goes right here. So the clip ends and the car doesn't leave the screen. So I'm just going to stop tracking it around here, almost the last frame, right? So the first thing is I want to make sure that my annotation, the object that's going to follow my car around, stays on screen for this entire duration. And also I want to add a custom animation to the object and stretch that animation for the entire duration of my clip. I'm not moving it yet, so it just sits there. So now you can see that my object is going to be on screen for the entire duration of the video or the entire duration of the video clip that I want to track, right? Although it's not moving. The second step now is to move the object at the both points at the end and the beginning where my object is going to be at these two points. We're going to the start and you notice with my selected object, I can go back to the first frame when the car comes in. And this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to take this object and notice I told you, remember I told you that we're going to focus on one point on my object. Well, the car is kind of small here and blurry. I can't see you exactly, but I'm going to approximate the tip of my arrow here, the tip of this uh, annotation, the, the pointy bit, I'm just going to put this on top of the car for now. Now you notice part of the text is outside. That is fine. It just gives it a bit of realism. And then I'm going to move to the very last frame. And again, we see a car on the screen here and the objects moved up because it was up there before. And I'm going to take the object again and place it on top of the car right there, just very accurately. So now my object is going to be at the start and at the end exactly on top of the car. 
obviously when I move it now it's not following the car it's just it's just moving around in a straight line so this is one downside of Camtasia anything that moves in Camtasia is moving in a straight line there is no shape animation there is no follow an object or anything like that so we will have to now build the animation in between these steps so one thing that I think is a good idea is to always go halfway through the animation and move the object in the right place then move again halfway between those move the object again in the right place and keep repeating that halfway 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 until we get you know all of the motion animated and the way to do this is you don't even have to worry about creating these animations because since I already have a full animation you know taking place from the very first frame to the last one if I move somewhere in the middle let's suppose I'm moving here and I place the playhead in here with my clip selected if I move my object Camtasia is going to automatically introduce a keyframe at this point and record where my object was in that moment. So watch, watch this. My playhead is somewhere in the middle of the animation. I'm moving this object. Again, remember, I've chosen this point. Notice the top of the car has a little black dot. I think that may be a radio antenna or something. I'm going to point the very tip of my annotation at that point and that is going to be from now on the point I'm following notice what happened on the timeline Camtasia created a new keyframe from the very first frame to here and from here it's gonna have a different animation to the end so watch this now if I play it the object doesn't move in a straight line anymore it moves in a two line kind of thing first it just moves in the point where I pointed it just now and then it just loses the car and moves at the end again so what we need to do is keep breaking these animations in half every time every time and then Camtasia is just going to create the keyframes in between so this is really again I know it's a manually involved process but actually every other software that does tracking does exactly the same thing follows the pixels and creates keyframes along the way so depending on the movement I'm gonna go again and break down into half the rest of this animation right so I'm gonna go here and keep moving the object in the right place yeah there's nothing to it just go halfway in here move the object to the right place you may want to have to use the arrow keys if you want the movement to be more precise so that's fine so then let's move in here in the middle again move again the object on top of the car move to the next half move the object again on top of the antenna here move again here so I keep doing this halfway through every keyframe animation until I have my animation so watch this now let's see play okay the object kind of loses its place but it's already following the car closer to where it should be and notice at the very end there because the movement of the car is sort of constant and my animation is constant then it, it kind of follows the car around in the right place so for the second part of the animation I don't think we will have to add so many keyframes because watch you know the, it's almost following the car in the right position what we need to deal with is the first part which is you know the car is moving faster and it kind of drifts so again let's go back halfway between two keyframes again move the object ever so slightly move again halfway here the reason for halfway is because we're trying to keep a constant speed between the keyframes and the object moving at an equal uh, you know equal speed the same pace all the way so again I'm going here in the middle and adjusting my position you notice here it's slowing down a bit the car is behind here point at the antenna again you can use the arrows and keep doing that keep moving it here we go like this sometimes 
you don't even have to move it vertically just horizontally so that's another tip if you don't want your objects to kind of jump up and down up and down all the time while it's kind of riding some waves um, try and keep it at the same height which is why I told you to try and attach yourself to a point that is always visible in the scene in the clip on that object and travel with that point so again let's see what I've done so far okay almost my object is moving with the car so now if you want to have more control you can zoom in control key and mouse wheel zooms in to the uh, timeline so you can more easily place your playhead in the uh, in between the two keyframes and again adjust your object ever so slightly uh, just so if you move it at least one pixel um, Camtasia is going to add a keyframe because it means there was a position change in there so if you don't need to make a uh, big change just just use the arrow keys and just tap it left or right uh, just a little bit uh, to, to generate the keyframe there just adjust it a bit because Camtasia is going to interpolate it's going to create all of the frames in between so only adjust where you need to adjust and if you can help it keep the object at the same level because that's going to actually make it um, the animation more smooth so notice here I'm using the arrow keys to just slide the object left and right because the top of the car there remains pretty much at the same height. So all I'm doing it is I'm just really bringing it back home every time it just strays away from the car. Move the keyframe in between the next two, um, move the playhead and just adjust your object. So uh, sometimes you don't even need, have to do anything. So just bring it back there. So this does take a while and depending on your uh, video clip, it may take longer or shorter. Um, depending on that, you may have to do more of these movements. And that is a nice tip to change the easing for these animations so that they don't uh, look like they're coming in in bursts and uh, stuttering. So here we go. Let's play it again. You can see already my annotation is pretty much on top of the car most of the time and what you can do is you can take your playhead and just scroll back to the problem areas so if you play this and you notice that at some point the annotation the object is too far away from the car you can actually go frame by frame by using the comma and the dot keys to move one frame up and down so you can go frame by frame if you need to so in this case look I'm going frame by frame and I got to a point where there is no keyframe so I can just switch to the arrow keys and just nudge the object slightly then use again the uh, dot key to move fur further and then again use the arrow key to adjust the position one more frame two more frames left so what happens is Camtasia just creates the frames in between so really if you have the time and you want the smoothest motion you can just go uh, one frame and then adjust one frame adjust one frame and then you just keep watching that point keep watching that object point that you've chosen and just adjust the object so you can use two hands just go frame by frame using the arrow keys and the dot and comma keys and you can do this now depending on the length of your video obviously this may be too tedious to do so I, I don't know but like I said all of the other software does exactly the same except it does it automatically so you can just go frame by frame like that and just slightly adjust your object and you notice on the timeline you notice Camtasia creating those keyframes for me so I'm not even I'm not even looking at the timeline I'm just advancing my playhead and getting my object to follow that little point on top of the car that I chose so this is another way to do it just frame by frame just tracking the object yourself now this is very important because uh, one tip I have to just so you know 
you want to do this when your video is in the right place and you're not going to make any more cuts to your video because then you're going to mess this all up if you then have to move the video around the animation is not going to be in the same place so watch what happens now play it so my object is tracking watch the part where i've done it manually it just stays locked to the top of the car and doesn't even move isn't that cool so if um i don't want to make this video any any longer but really Finally, when you've got your animation in place and the object is roughly in the right position, then you can go really deep into it by going frame by frame tracking. Make sure your object is selected and then just go one frame at a time and use the arrow keys to just adjust the position. So then really pretty much your object is going to just follow the exact point of where it has to be. So just use the keys, move forward. As soon as you notice it's kind of moving away just adjust it like this frame by frame make small adjustments until everything is done and you've gone over your entire clip this is one way to create manual object tracking in Camtasia obviously you need to decide on a specific point to follow and there you have it you have a tracking object tracking another object so this can be useful if you need to maybe blur out some areas in your clip somewhere you have some confidential information or something that cannot be seen like someone's face or something else that you want to track across a video clip uh, depending on the length of that just create your object and just keep moving it and if you need to blur out some areas you may not even need this much of a accuracy on tracking you just need it to be roughly in the area it needs to be and just keep moving it with the keys and create these frames automatically uh, by enabling that um, easing that is linear so it just keeps going I hope this tutorial was useful I know Camtasia doesn't have tracking and it's not automatic but if you really need to do it and incorporate this in your project this is one way to do it I hope you enjoyed this tutorial thank you for your time if you have any questions about this video or any Camtasia questions in general let me know in the comments and I'll have to I'll try to answer your question and try and help you and maybe I'm going to even create a tutorial about it. I'm looking for ideas so let me have it. Thanks very much. See you next time.